Berrien Workshop are embarking on a project that will be tailored to middle-aged people, dealing with wealth, wealth creation, and wisdom through the lens of the scriptures, the Bible. The Bible is a historical document and gives us accounts of men and women who went through what we're going through today. It's also a textbook of sorts, a guidebook in that it can impart wisdom to its readers and those that practice what it says. It's also a book of laws and principles. For example, give and it will be given back unto you, or whatsoever a man sows, he shall rip. Second Kings chapter 4 tells the story of a woman that started off severely indebted and eventually having so much money she could pay off her creditors and sustain herself and her dependents. So let's look at some of these principles as we have read in the book of Ecclesiastes. Nothing is new under the sun. A principle used then is still valid today. Here's the backstory and the characters of this account in Kings chapter 4. Elisha was a prophet who had a wealthy father and a fireman background, a businessman of sorts. He became a mentee who served under Elijah for six years before taking up Elijah's mantle to become what was known as the prophet in Israel. He invested heavily in people, being the head of what was called the school or the company of prophets. Kings, as well as regular people like me and you, sought him out for intellectual, spiritual and business guidance. This guy was a beacon of wisdom, a prophet, a former businessman and a miracle worker. He was a man of influence and reach. In chapter 6, we see the king of Israel calling him my father as a mark of respect. All other characters in this particular story remained a name. But Jewish oral tradition and the first century historian called Josephus tells us that the husband of this woman who became widowed was a man called Obadiah. Obadiah from 1 Kings chapter 18, who was the governor of King Ahab's palace. Yes, Ahab, that's the husband of that terrible, awful woman, Jezebel, who was killing the Lord's prophets. Obadiah had hidden a hundred prophets in two separate caves and fed them at his own expense. We can probably now work out why creditors of bailiffs were knocking at this woman's door. Propping up the hundred prophets left debts that took a toll on the family. Obadiah was a God-fearing and well-intentioned man who left massive debts. Jewish tradition tells us that this money was borrowed from King Ahab and his son, Joharam, made demands for this money. Poor financial decisions and choices tend to affect those that are in close proximity to us. The intention of the project is to bring principles that are to help us out of dire straits, to define goals, to create wealth, and to effectively pursue our purpose. The widow was a troubled individual. Verse 1 tells us she cried out to Elisha. Death has the ability to steal away joy, sleepless night, and can easily eat away at our mental health. This chapter talks about her having nothing but except a little cruise of oil. She had very likely liquidated all she had to keep the bailiffs at bay, but still remained in debt. Lesson 1. Don't sell or liquidate your assets to maintain your lifestyle. Always think investment. The creditors had the legal right to take away her sons as slaves and be released from this burden, this debt, after seven years, as detailed in the law of Moses. This was a contractual obligation, an agreement, terms of the law. As gloomy as this situation sounds, this entire episode ends up with her having enough money to sustain a lifetime. 